Hello students, welcome to the NIOS Recording Center. Today we will be learning about the content of social and political life in social science at the elementary stage. I am Dr. V. Suprabha, principal of Vidya School. So we all know that social science is a subject that has been studied from times immemorial, from the past. Social science has always been a very, very important aspect of studies for the human being because it deals with the society where we live in. The difference is just that from what it was as social science earlier was we studied more of history, civics and geography to now also add it to the economics and sociology and economics all together form social science. Social science is also a subject which is very essential for the times from day old till today. From informal to personal, it's more systematic now. It is more formal now. It takes into account all the developments of the modern world. Like I said, it's our society. We live in the society. And whatever changes that are happening in the society are taken into account. It understands the environment. The subject understands the environment and the understanding of the society. To understand the society, we need to know what is around. And what is around is what environment is all about. There is also another transformation that has happened. That is, it is moving from general to very specific. In the earlier times, social science was looked at as a different set of study where there were certain norms, there were rules. Presently, that has moved and it has further been subdivided into smaller areas of study. Now, what is the new curriculum for the elementary level? Social science is a formal school subject, we all know that. And it, it was earlier studied as an integrated subject. It includes three main areas, history, geography and social and political life, which was also called as civics. As an integrated curriculum, all put together, because one cannot live independently of the other. That means the present social and political life has learned a lot from the history. How the kings lived, how the kings ruled, what policies did they make, what were the kind of people who were living in those times, how were they subjected to, what were the rules and laws, what, how it was followed, how people could go and ask for justice. All the history is so essential for creating the new political order. Similarly is geography. Without the environment around, without the people around, we cannot study the political and social life. Their social and political life is dependent on where they come from. The people living in deserts have an entirely different social life, while people living in the Himalayas or in the mountains have a completely different social life. The farmers live an entirely different life where the nomads have a different society to follow. Hence, geography and history are very essential part of the social and political life. That's why the integrated curriculum, because they, it cannot, they, each of these subjects cannot exist without each other. And there's a lot of emphasis on the relationship across the different subjects and the different grades. Now, the social and political life has replaced civics as a subject. Around 15, 20 years ago, it was called as civics, while now it is called as social and political life. And the social and political life or SPL is based on the real life situations of what people go through. Whom do you have to approach when you have to get the street lights altered? Whom do you go to when there is a break in the roads? Whom do you go to when there is no electricity? 
all those real life situations are taken care of and practical situations are taken to teach the different concepts. Most educational institutions have started having voting within the school and the child learns what electorate is all about. Family and social issues are also brought into the classrooms. The caste system of India, the different classes that people belong to, the different languages that people speak, what happens at different homes and all the social issues are, are brought out in this subject. The issues related to women, the issues related to the poor, the issues related to different castes is all brought up in the present social and political life and it also draws knowledge from economics and sociology as I had mentioned earlier because economics rules and politics revolves around economics, our social life revolves around economics, how we live our life is based on that, the social structure, how our people, what kind of people live around you, our neighborhood is so essential for the study of social and political life. Now let us see the content comparison between what was civics and what presently is the new subject. Now there were two models that we are going to compare today. One is a model that was given by the Ishwar Bhai Patel committee in 1977 who suggested the course content of what is to be studied in civics for classes 6, 7 and 8 at the elementary level. And the second group is very, very new. It is a national focus group on teacher, teaching of social sciences which is a part of the national curriculum framework of 2006. Now let us compare. So let us see what Ishwar Bhai Patel committee had said. So in class 6 they spoke about the civic life, they spoke about the Indian constitution and because the country had been independent and new developments were happening, so they were talking about achievements and challenges which we have had. For example, the different river valley projects that the government came up with, the different five year plans that the government came up with. While the national focus group of 2006 which is relatively very new brought in diversity and interdependence of people. India for example is a country where so many languages are spoken, so many varieties of food is eaten, so many varieties of customs and traditions are followed. So there is a lot of diversity, yet there is a lot of interdependence. We are all dependent on monsoon for example for all our celebrations, for all our, all our crops. While we also need to know about what democracy is all about and talk about equality like I mentioned the classes, there is a skewed class difference in the country. So we talk about equality, equality of men and women, equality of people earning higher classes and lower classes and then there are rules and laws and social justice. Many laws have been rewritten, our constitution has undergone a lot of changes, a lot of amendments have been made to the constitution. So the new national focus group has taken all that into account with changing times the students must learn about the change in the social science. The Ishwar Bhai Patel committee said for class 6 that they would study the community schemes, the cooperatives and the community development. If you remember we had the milk revolution or the wild white revolution, we had the green revolution, we had the uh, river valley projects which came up, all those were very very essential in the year 1977. We were just a few years, around 30 years after our independence. There were a lot of local government that had to be formed, there had to be need for structuring and different functions had to be laid out. So the local government had to be understood differently for rural areas and differently for urban areas. Then there was the district administration which was taking care of the law and order. So people need to, the students needed to know about that. And then the property, 
what was the community property, how property became important to us, what are the historical monuments, even that is the property, that is the property of the government and which are those properties. And there was a project work which spoke about developing the abilities essential for any active citizens of India and the different problems that they faced. For class 7, they spoke about the chief features of our constitution, the basic principles, the national government, the state government, what were under the national government, the rules and policies, the policies which were under the state governments and there were some which were common to both the state and the national government. The various duties and directives, the principles that people needed to follow, student had to learn the national symbols. New laws were being formed, so the student needed to learn about the parliamentary form of government with the prime minister at the head and then we had the president as well. Now, where it is coming from? It was based on what United Kingdom had. We also needed to learn how the laws are made and then executing those laws. Who executes the laws? The president, the prime minister, the council of ministers, the governor, the chief ministers. So, how from top down all the people were divided into different spaces where and what they would be doing, what was their role and then interpreting the law of the Supreme Court. And then there was of course the project work. Now this committee also suggested for class 8, if you can see now this is very progressive. What they learnt was the basics in class 6 about the civics and then they went on to learn about the laws and who are the people who govern the laws and then came the national goals. The five-year plan set our national goals, what's democracy, what's written in the constitution, democracy, socialism, secularism and then international cooperation. We were slowly and steadily moving out and meeting other countries which are our neighbours. It spoke about how we can strengthen the democracy and what role has got the citizens to do in that. We also were looking at literacy in India, how people could be made literate, what they would study because a lot of people at that point were under poverty. They did not have jobs, people did not have money, they did not go to schools. The population was increasing, there was so much of unemployment, the casteism in our society, how we can reconstruct all these elements of our society, the social and economic reconstruction was emphasized. We had the five year plans as I mentioned, we saw what were the achievements of these plans, what was the failure. Like the first year five year plan, we had emphasized on agriculture. India is an agrarian economy, more than 70 percent of the population in those times were involved only in agricultural practices which include farming and animal husbandry. So the five-year plans, each five-year plan had a different area to look into from agriculture to industry to the rural life to the urban life to the growth of these areas was all the focus and students needed to know about the five-year plans. Then the defense of our country, the different armed forces that we had and also apart from the army, the navy and the air force, we also had the other ancillary forces which included the territorial army, the border security force, the NCC, the citizens and defence groups etc. Then came the world, India and the world. What was the need for cooperation? Now if you look at this, when it was in class 7, it was more about just knowing our neighbours, if you can see this. But in class 8, the curriculum moved from that to need for the cooperation and coexistence because we have had wars and we needed to now coexist within our countries. We had a lot of neighbours around us, we all know about that. Many neighbours surrounding us and the United Nations came into a big way at that point in time. 
which needed to be addressed and learned by the students. And of course, there was always a project work. Now let's go and see what the National Focus Group is saying for 2006. Now if you see, they divided the entire curriculum into different units. So class 6 studied the units on diversity, government, local government and then making a living. And now if you look at it, diversity in itself is a unit and there are many chapters under diversity. As I just mentioned, India is a country which has many languages, which has many customs, many traditions. And so diversity, understanding that diversity was most essential. We have the state and the central government, two sets of governments and two different rulers in each government. And both had to work hand in hand. And then going down, we had the local governments till the panchayat, which were the village governments. And then how people made a living, what did they do for it? In class 7, the focus moved to democracy. The state governments, specific to the state government. Understanding what is the role of media. Now, if you look at the comparison between what was the curriculum of 1977, there was no space for media then. But now, media, print media as well as the audiovisual media is a big breakthrough in our modern society. Then, gender differences. What was earlier accepted that the woman would probably work from home? and the men would take care of the family is altering now. And so, there is a need to understand that change that is coming up. More and more women are taking up jobs, not just jobs, but they are heading institutions. So, gender differences need to be taken into account. And then, it is a world today where we are actually working with countries around. So, there are markets, we are buying and selling, we are trading with countries, there are lots of imports and exports that are happening. Things we don't have, we get from outside. Things they don't have, we give it to them. So, we need to really learn about the markets all around us. In class 8, it focuses on the constitution. What does the constitution say in detail? We speak about the rights, we speak about our duties. What are the different rights that the people have? the right to speech, the right to work, the right to live freely anywhere in the country and many more rights. Along with the rights also come the duties, the duties that we need to perform towards our nation, towards the society, towards the neighbourhood and what the constitution says about it all. How and where do we go? Then comes the parliamentary form of government. It talks about the elections who will be the head of the government. It talks about the oppositions, how the people elect their representatives. Is the president elected or is the prime minister elected? And how people go for secret ballot. What is secret ballot? How people vote? And then come the judiciary, the law and justice. Then there are courts. There are courts at the lowest level. Then there are courts at the state level, we have the high courts and then we also have the supreme court which is the highest judicial authority in the country. To know more about judiciary, how they function, what matters are taken up, how and people can go and take care of their lives and ask for justice. Then social justice and the marginalized. Various surveys that were conducted and we all know that every 10 years we also have the census which gets to count the number of people in the country, what they do, how they live, where do they live, what they own, all the details are taken in. And after the census we now get an idea of what is the kind of social justice that is being given to them and how many people are marginalized. There are many living in our forests and those forest dwellers have no access to what city dwellers have. Now, how do we bring them into the regular structure of the society? 
all those details are studied in the social justice and marginalized which is unit 4 of class 8 and then comes the economic presence of the government the government policies the policies that would be helpful for the nation the policies that would help the people the various taxes that the people need to pay all those came under the economic presence of the government now if you notice these topics were not there in the 1977 curriculum because for that period they were not relevant and hence the change in the curriculum to bring relevance to what we need to study right now when you look at the curriculum how it has transformed from what it was to now we will see that the previous curriculum was given by the state at that point in time we were an economy which was growing we were a country which was growing after many years of being under the british rule now we were finding our foot we were creating our own governance and we had to really look into different areas and different branches to bring that forth so the previous curriculum was intended that every student learns about how our country was and what we are coming up to and what newness can we bring first understanding the basics over the period of time from 1977 to 2006 there are lots of new changes which have come in the world has transformed the role of technology has really really improved all new things are coming in technology is playing a major role it has brought the world together where it took months for people to travel from south of india to north of india today it takes hours to travel from the south of india to north of india with the changes in the kind of society we are the more exposure that we got the more we got to learn from outside what's happening and we ourselves altered the curriculum has changed or transformed with the transformation of the people it's more people centric now because people need to understand and people are part of this entire work entire social transformation hence the present curriculum given by the national focus group is very essential to live our lives the way the present day times are it will keep changing not that this will this is the end of it it changes new more things can be added and they will be added but presently this is what we are studying and so the entire curriculum flows smoothly from class 6 to 8 for the elementary school and the students learn everything about what's happening all around us thank you